When photographing outside, the ambient light goes through changes from day to night. If you know about the different stages, you can use these to your advantage to kind of add to your photo or get a certain look or make your photo stand out from the rest. In the daytime, there's plenty of light about, and it's around about a Kelvin level of 5,600K. And this corresponds with the daylight white balance setting on your camera. As the sun drops, the Kelvin level drops, and it goes from being a cool white light to more of a yellow light. This is caused by the angle of the sun becoming more acute and having to travel through more of an atmosphere to get to your position. Now, depending on how much dust, smoke, pollution, fog, or clouds there are, or how thick the atmosphere is basically, and how many particles there are in that atmosphere, determines the color to a certain extent. Sometimes you can have a bit of dust in the air and it will add a bit of yellow to that atmosphere. Now, on the other hand, if there's too many particles in the air, and basic clouds are made of water particles, this will obviously block the sunlight from coming through. and It will really deaden down the colors. So it is very much weather dependent. Now, when the sun does start dropping and the light goes more yellow and then maybe goes to an orangey color and sometimes even a red color, this is known as the golden hour. And even though it has hour in the name, in some places it lasts longer than an hour and in other places it lasts less than an hour. Basically, it's from when the sun's elevation is at six degrees to your position until it drops below the horizon. Once the sun drops below the horizon, this is known as civil twilight. This is the time when there's still enough light about from the sunlight reflecting off the sky that no artificial light is needed to see. This lasts from when the sun is just below the horizon until the sun is six degrees below the horizon. This time is also known as the blue hour, and this blue hour overlaps into nautical twilight. Again, depending on your position on the planet, this blue hour may last more or less than an hour. The blue hour is when the light is no longer directly coming from the sun. Instead, the sunlight's blue wavelengths dominate due to Rayleigh scattering, and also the chappiest absorption caused by ozone. Basically, all you need to know is that the sun's blue light wavelengths scatter for longer than the sun's reddish wavelengths so the blue light sticks around for longer. Next, you get nautical twilight. This is when the sun is between six and 12 degrees below the horizon. So the sky will still be blue in nautical twilight, but at an ever decreasing intensity. It gets its name from seamen because when the sun drops to 12 degrees below the horizon, sailors can no longer navigate by using that horizon line alone because it blends in with the sky. So when the sun is at 12 degrees below the horizon, this is nautical dusk and that's the end of nautical twilight. After this, you get astronomical twilight, where the sun is between 12 and 18 degrees below the horizon. In really dark locations, you'll still see a slight difference between this and the night sky, but in the city like I'm at the moment, it'll be hard to tell the difference because of all of that light pollution starting to dominate the night sky. And this is why it's really hard to see many stars in the city at night. You need to get as far away from this light pollution as possible to start seeing those star-filled skies. So here's the sequence in its entirety. It starts off with daytime and then drifts into the golden hour. You can see that nice yellow light dropping down to an orange and a red light. As the sun drops below the horizon, this marks the start of civil twilight, which is also known as the blue hour. This transitions into nautical twilight and then astronomical twilight. Due to the glow of the city, at this location you can't really distinguish between astronomical twilight and nighttime, but if you are out in the country, you would see a slight difference. In the morning, this is just reversed, so it'll get to the end of true nighttime, then it will go into astronomical twilight, then nautical twilight, and then civil twilight, and then after the sunrise, this is into the golden hour. Now, if you want to learn more about photography, click on this video next, or if you want to binge watch a load of photography tutorials, click down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography and videography. I'll see you next time.